So last week when we got into bitters, we talked about the triangle, and I promised we were going to come back and talk about the triangular theory of digestion, or what I call the upstream effect, right? Okay, we have a river. We live on the Missouri River here in Omaha. Upstream is Sioux City. We know that no matter how much we clean the river up in Omaha, it's all going to get polluted by what comes down from Sioux City. So grandfathered in, isn't it? All their lack of uh, cleaning up their water. Uh, I don't know the history of it. It's just bad. So um, this is called the upstream downstream effect. So what this means is that what is going on in your bowels, your large and small intestine, is a reflection of what starts in the upstream area. So, so many in the medical profession, they overfocus on the lower part of the downstream effect in the colon, small intestine. And in natural medicine, some people do too. But here we're talking about upstream. And by upstream, we mean the triangle of digestion starts all digestive problems. Doesn't matter what you have from ulcers to colitis to leaky gut to malabsorption to diarrhea to constipation to stomach aches, gas, bloating, burping, belching, acid reflux, it all starts in the triangle. So we might have to help the bowel, but we have to first make sure this is working properly. So I wanna review why this is so important briefly. Okay, and I will drop like a sketch of these notes into Thinkific. So what does a pancreas do? Just to review. It's really little, right? It's not very big. It causes big problems though. Okay. So we have two different functions of the pancreas. We have what we call endocrine or hormonal, right? Where we have things like insulin and glucagon secreted. These are things that have hormonal effects, affect blood sugars, affect a lot of things in the body, right? So this is also why we immediately start to see that this triangle, why we talked about digestive bitters, it has a huge impact on hormones also, indirectly, okay? So we also have the exocrine or the enzyme part of the pancreas. And it's easier to maybe say what the pancreas doesn't do. We have to remember when we take digestive bitters, your pancreas is activated. It's a nerve response, right? So your pancreas makes a lot of juices. How much, it's crazy how much juice how much pancreatic juice is made a day? You want to guess? It's pretty crazy. One to four liters a day, which sounds like a lot to me. If you've ever seen anybody on life support in a hospital, you see those fluids, right? In containers outside the body. It's pretty interesting the first time you see it, right? So... The pancreas is going to make digestive enzymes. What digestive enzymes does it make and why is it important? So it's going to make what we call lipolytic enzymes, which means they digest fats. Okay? There's a lot of them, but the main one that's most talked about is lipase. So you literally can't digest fats without it, okay? So it's pretty essential, okay? Okay, we also have glycolytic. What do you think that digests? Glycolytic's gonna digest, yeah, carbs and sugars. So here we have amylase. And lactase, right? What do you, if a little enzyme review, 
these terms shouldn't trick us, right? When we're talking about a digestive enzyme, the end part always ends in ACE, right? The beginning part tells us what that does. So ACE means to like digest or break down. So lipase literally means it just breaks down lipids or fats. Amylase means it breaks down um, carbohydrates. Lactase means it breaks down lactose, which would be the sugars that are in dairy products, right? So if you have pancreatic issues, you know, you're probably going to have a hard time digesting all of these things, okay? And we also have the most common ones that we see most talked about is protolytic, which means proteins. These are really commonly mentioned a lot in natural medicine because we use what are called protolytic enzymes a lot. And we use what are sometimes called vegetarian enzymes a lot. And we'll kind of decipher some of that. So these, all of these protolytic enzymes, which you can go to the health food store and buy, are how we digest all the proteins that we eat. So the higher protein diet, the more we have to be able to secrete them, right? This is why people that have liver pancreas problems can't do very good on a high protein, high fat diet because they're just, they can't keep up with it. What is the keto diet? Can we talk about? Well, keto diet, I mean, not always, but in some people that have a pre-existing problem here, it could be not good for, okay? So there's a lot of other enzymes that are made by the pancreas, including kind of things we don't think about, like um, nucleases, which digest like DNA and RNA of all the food and things we're eating. You never thought you had to like break down, right? <laughs> You're literally assimilating the essence of whatever it is you're eating, right? Um, that's kind of freaky a little bit, but we kind of forget that. So in general, my personal approach is to always strengthen the triangle before giving anybody digestive enzymes. Because the, the idea is let's get our body to do it first. If for some reason... Maybe medically something's really diseased or maybe the person is over 90 years old or something. We may have to do that, but it's pretty rare. And all the patients I've seen for digestive stuff, they get maybe one or two people in my whole life that I felt actually had to do a digestive enzyme. A lot of people take these like the candy, by the way. They take mega doses, all these. We don't know if these are like hormones, meaning if you take them like as a capsule, if your body shuts down its production. That's also why I don't like to do that. We don't really have any studies saying one way or another that it does that. So to me, taking a lot of digestive enzyme is working against the body's intelligence. So I don't like to do that unless we have to supplement that like some people have pancreas diseases where they might have to do that okay so you're saying lactose intolerance is not one of them yeah lactose intolerance could also be genetically driven too could be the inability to process their sugar mm -hmm. so yeah so lactose intolerance is somewhat genetically disposed in certain people and cultures, but we can also help that, right? We don't have to take like lactase, for example. We can try doing this first and a lot of times that gets a lot better. Okay. Okay. Stomach. What is the stomach doing or secreting? So basically the pancreas, we've got everything we're going to eat. Fats, starches, sugars, carbohydrates, protein. Like it's all happening there, right? 
What about the stomach? What's the stomach going to add? It's going to add, we're going to add hydrochloric acid, right? How does HCL look when you buy it as a supplement, by the way? Okay. What does it say on the label, though? On the label, it'll say beta-teen HCL. So when you, a lot of people are taking like herbal formulas for digestion and don't even realize that it has like hydrochloric acid in it. So again, I don't like people to take hydrochloric acid until you try to strengthen this first. Just make the stomach healthier and better at digestion. So by the way, beta teen HDL is so strong as a supplement. If you don't need it, you will get very much like acid reflux and a stomach ache, despite how like some functional doctors may talk, like everybody needs to add hydrochloric acid in that. Like that's not, not really true at all. And a lot of people can have even like ulcer. I've seen people who are taking it from like a health food store, give themselves an ulcer because it's so strong. Okay. And we'll see why the stomach also makes very interesting, a lot of mucus. Why? Why in the heck is it making mucus? That's very demulcent, right? Why is it doing that? Is it related to the coating inside the stomach to help? Uh... So there is a coating, but this is also acting as another buffer to protect our digestive tract lining. So it's actually, your stomach actually makes mucousy products that do protect the stomach in case it gets over irritated. It's called mucin, M-U-C-I-N. Is that what it says because you talked about in the first? That's different, different. Mm -hmm. But there is a lining on all of our, our digestive tract, but this is different. This is made by the stomach, okay? Um, it also, if you remember from biology class, it also makes intrinsic factor. What the heck does that thing do? And this is how we absorb vitamin B12. So without it, we can't absorb B12 at all. This is why people with more severe stomach problems or ulcers often have depleted B12, even if they're eating it because this is not working very efficiently. You know, vegetarians and vegans have to be more cautious with their stomach health because they're kind of prone to not absorbing, they're not eating a lot of B12 because most of it, a lot of it comes from animal products. So we have to be super careful if someone who's like a strict vegetarian or vegan has a lot of stomach issues. Isn't it hard to get the body to process B12? Um, uh, not necessarily. No, I don't think it's better to take B12 as a shot. Okay, so what else? We also have, again, amylase that's made by the stomach. We have lipase. So we have some fat digesting and carbohydrate digesting enzymes that were similar to the pancreas that are also made by the stomach, okay? We could also say in this picture here, we can't forget about your mouth. What does your mouth secrete? Saliva, what is in saliva though? It's again, amylase for carbohydrates and lipase for fats. This is why, um, this is why when we take digestive bitters, we salivate and that's a good thing, right? Dr. Christopher had one of the best digestive sayings of all time, he said, you drink your solids and you chew your liquids. You know what that means? It means that 
if we take time and eat and chew and digest, we're getting more saliva. You're already having more enzymes produced. And when we drink a lot of things like juices and that too, most people just like pound them, but we, sh we should actually be sipping them and kind of like allowing the saliva to digest them too. It shouldn't be like power shot like we do in America, right? Exactly. It's like bar mentality. Just stick a shot. Here are juice, 16 ounces. Just kidding. Right? <laughs> I mean, healthier, but like not, not the best for digestion. That's why sometimes I say that it's good to know what you're going to have to eat. Like sometimes it's more so you can prepare your, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's just it's just saying that when you do eat, you need to slow down and chew really good. Even if you're drinking like a protein shake, you should be kind of chewing it a little bit, digesting it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In Ayurveda, they talk about how the, the, the beginning of the digestion begins to when you think about when you think about it. Yeah, so I mean, a lot of this, you know, like if you see a commercial for food, you're gonna start salivating on some level, right? So I mean, mm -hmm. okay, so liver, gallbladder, we've talked about this a little bit with bitters, and we'll go back into this, but what is our liver, gallbladder making? Bile, that's the main thing, right? What does bile do, though? So, okay, let's unpack all that. First of all, how much bile does the average human body make a day? It's more than I would have ever thought. About 600 milliliters, which would be how many? So that 60 ounces... 60 milliliters would be two ounces, so that's 20 ounces. Is that right? Is my math right? No, 10 ounces. All right, let's get some math out. I have to figure out what this means. 600 milliliters is the X as 60 milliliters is the two ounces. So one, two, zero, zero equals 60 X, X equals what? 20, right? So 20 ounces, that's a lot. More than your Coca-Cola every day, right? <laughs> so it's quite a bit of bile. Imagine all that coming out of your body every day. Um, so the functions of bile, number one, is it helps us to break down everything that's fat-based. But this is where it gets important. This includes not only breaking down fats and oils, but also breaking down and absorbing fat-soluble vitamins, like vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, right? These things that are essential for health. This is why when people have liver gallbladder problems, they often can't absorb vitamin D. They often have low vitamin D levels chronically because it's a liver issue, right? Okay. Um, so it's helping us to break down fats and oils, fat-soluble vitamins. It also helps to create an alkaline environment in the intestines so we're not too acidic. Because if your intestines are too acidic, it will burn them or irritate them. Your stomach's kind of built for it, but your intestines, not so much. Um and this is also how your body breaks down cholesterol. Okay. This is also how your body breaks down. This is really important to remember. Fat soluble toxins, which are the worst. These are the things that often get stuck in our tissues and are really difficult to get out. Okay. 
So this is also one of the functions of bile is to excrete bilirubin, which is a breakdown product in the body, right? Interesting, bilirubin is what makes our bowels brown. That's why when our bowels turn green or yellow or orange, we know something is not good with the liver or pancreas, okay? And then eventually that bilirubin builds up and makes us turn yellow too. So, I mean, that's, that's, this has got to happen every day. Okay. The good thing is that digestive bitters, they really target this entire process. All of it. So in natural medicine, constipation, we define as not having a good bowel movement every day. That would be constipation. So if you're going every other day, not good, like every, the further out it goes, the worse it is. Because all of these things are just continuing to be reabsorbed in your body, all these toxins. So it's called auto-intoxication because it's coming from inside of you. That makes sense. It's not good. So, and people feel it, right? People feel it. Okay. So the good thing about this, the number one take home message of this is you don't have to memorize all this. Digestive bitters like dandelion and the things we'll talk about is how the body stimulates this entire process. So upstream downstream effect, what happens upstream right? The more efficient this is, what goes on downstream in our bowels, or we could just say for cleansing and detoxification in general, is affected by this. So we, right? So in Chinese medicine, they have a different way of saying this. They say, um, besides above all else, protect the righteous chi, they say, above all else, protect the stomach, and what they mean by stomach is the pancreas and the stomach, not just the stomach. So, right? So like in Ayurveda and Chinese medicine, every formula would have some type of an element that treats this part of it. I think Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine do a very good job of this, that within every formula, there is almost a digestive component. Okay. Okay. We made it through that. What questions do you have about the triangle? What if your gallbladder is removed? Then this affects this whole process, right? So if your gallbladder is removed, do we want bitters even more or not? Yes. We do. So we call bitters gallbladder and bile for that gallbladder in a bottle for that reason, that bitters will help people to compensate for not having a gallbladder. Because despite the fact that medically speaking, maybe you had to have your gallbladder removed, there's still inefficiencies that exist now with digestion. Okay. That's just. I mean, you know, Mm -hmm. So somebody online is saying in the Middle East that they call the stomach the gateway or entryway of disease, which is, that's, that's, I think a lot of other cultures share that idea, but she is saying they also further wrap the stomach, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. baby stomach to protect it. Um, this is done a lot in Asian culture too, where we have the hamaki or haritaki, right? This is where the cummerbunds come from in ancient times. There's a lot of reasons, but protecting your life force, protecting your digestion, all kinds of reasons. Um, yeah, uh, I took a cultural anthropology class once and they were talking about how in this would have been when I was in college. Like it's, it was very common at that time for even medical doctors in Japan to scald patients with digestive problems and sexual problems and hormonal problems 
were not wearing their haritake, their abdominal, like, it looks like, you know what I'm talking about? This looks like a little band, and they're very fashionable, and I always thought, what a, like, a healthy, cool trend we should start again. <laughs> um, that too? Yeah, these are not, they're not super tight, right? They're not super tight. They're usually made of like silk historically. Now they're made of like cotton, but it's they're they're they. I don't. Know, I feel they put herbs in. you can also put herb and sometimes crystals in them and all kinds of wild stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, a lot of this is important in the Midwest. A lot of pesticides are fat soluble. That's why they're so bad. That's why when we eat fish from polluted water, those pesticides are fat soluble and they get into their fat. So it doesn't matter if we cook them, it doesn't matter what we do, they're in the tissues that we're eating, so we can't get around it. Mm -hmm. This is also why if we buy fish oils, we wanna make sure the company tests for heavy metals because often too heavy metals will get involved in that process too somewhat okay okay that was maybe more than i wanted to do on the triangle but i think it's important because this is how bitters works so every enzyme we talked about different bitters have been shown to increase every single thing we talked about bitters so how would you suggest someone try to use bitters in order to see if their lactose intolerance is genetic or so we would just like someone that has lactose intolerance we would just simply do some kind of digestive bitters just for a couple of months and then slowly have them kind of rechallenge it over time but if the bitters don't work at all the bitters don't work then you yeah yeah you might have to so it could be lactose intolerance or it could be a food allergy too or something so we would still have to kind of weed through that murkiness a little bit. Okay, let's start.